Long gospel, huh? Going to be a longer homily. Just kidding. My, uh, <clears throat> my oldest son, Nicholas, is now 37. But when he was six or seven years old, I thought he was lost. Now, he wasn't really lost, but I just didn't know where he was. And after searching the house, I couldn't find him, and I panicked big time. I mean, I really panicked. Well, it turned out that he had gone to the store with my wife and my mom, and they both thought that the other one had told me that they were taking him. Well, I guess in the long run, it didn't matter. He was safe, and I was most grateful, most grateful and relieved. I'm sure most of you parents can identify with the emotions that I was experiencing. It's a horrible experience with someone you, you love more than life is missing, and I, I don't wish that on anyone. Well, Jesus today tells us of the joy that heaven experienced when one of God's lost sons or daughters is found. Now, he's not talking about them being physically lost because God knows everything, but he is talking about them being lost to him through their sin. And when he refers to the great joy that heaven has when a lost child is found, he's also implying a great distress and pain when one goes astray, not unlike what we go through when we don't know where one of our loved ones is. All three of our readings today address this or some aspect of it. And here's the thing, God does not want us to stray. He made us and he loves us far more than we can ever, ever imagine. And because he loves us so much, he goes out of his way to meet us where we are and to do what he can to make our relationship with him whole again. In our first reading from the book of Exodus, we see God relenting on his just punishment of the Israelites for making and worshiping the golden calf. In our second reading, St. Paul tells us that Jesus came specifically to save sinners. Since each one of us sins, we can, each of us, make it personal and say that Jesus came to save me. And it's clear from the three parables in our gospel reading that God is overjoyed when one sinner repents of his sin. In fact, <clears throat> these parables were told in the first place because of the complaints of the scribes and the Pharisees who noticed that Jesus was associating and eating with sinners. His doing that was a great source of scandal to them. And Jesus doesn't deny it. In fact, he doubles down on it with those three parables. And in fact, as St. Paul says, Jesus came to save sinners. And that's the reason why he spent, spent so much time with them. He wanted to meet them where they are at. But as much as God wants to forgive us, and he does, we've got to do our part too. And our part <clears throat> is simply that we have to repent for our sins and ask for forgiveness. Otherwise, reconciliation is not possible. Now, God can and does forgive us when and where he wants. But through his church, he's left us the ordinary way for re reconnecting with him when we stumble and fall and get lost. And that's through the sacrament of reconciliation. So I'd like to spend a couple of minutes here just talking about that. Now I'm aware that a lot of people have a natural reluctance or are maybe intimidated in engaging with the priest to confess their sins. And as I said, God doesn't necessarily need a priest as he's the one doing the forgiving. But I will tell you this, he does use the priest in that action. I was ordained <clears throat> to the priesthood last year on June 26. So I've been a priest going on 15 months now. One week after I was ordained, I was sitting in the confessional for the first time hearing confessions. 
And I can tell you this, it was very, very strange and weird for me. People would come in, they'd tell me their sins, sometimes their troubles and their problems, one person right after another. Now, nothing I learned in seminary could train or teach me for that moment when I started hearing confessions, probably because it's a very unique thing. And of course, I was anxious and worried about it. And in between visitors, I would look up to the ceiling in that confessional and simply ask God why he has me doing this confession stuff. I didn't understand it. And that's between each and every visit I had. Holy Trinity is a large parish, so I had, I had lines waiting for confession. And I literally, after every visitor, I'd look up and ask that question. Now, it, it, it surprised me that I had never considered that prior to, con to, to my ordination, but I experienced this for, a, for quite a while, several weeks, maybe a couple of months. And it was always the same question. Why, God, do you have me doing this? One day, <clears throat> I started hearing confessions and something felt quite different in a, in a good way. I was he hearing people much better. In fact, I was hearing things that they hadn't said. And I became aware that some of what was coming out of my mouth was being influenced by, well, I, I wasn't really sure what it was but it seemed to be good stuff. And I'd say something to my visitor and then think to myself, where did that come from? Well, at some point that day, I recognized and I decidedly felt that the Holy Spirit was there, present in that confessional in a very special and particular way. And it's been that way for me ever since. I no longer ask God why he put me there. I no longer think my being there is weird or strange. In fact, I look forward in a big way with anticipation to ministering the sacrament of reconciliation. And when the last person leaves, I am genuinely sad that experiencing the Holy Spirit in that way has ended. And so, this is my request of you. We all need to be reconciled to the God who loves us, who loves us very, very much. And if you haven't been to confession ever or in a long while, I want you to consider returning. If you've forgotten how, I or any priest that you go to will help you. I'll tell you this too. I will not remember any of the sins you confessed. I asked God when I first entered seminary to take those memories from me, and he pretty much granted me that request. And even if I do remember, I am sworn under the penalty of excommunication and worse, if I ever were to repeat anything I've heard there, even under the threat of death. So I can assure you, your secrets are quite safe with me. And it's especially because of my sense of God in that sacrament, in ministering it, that I have really grown to become very, very attached to it. Anyway, I'm asking you to please consider the Sacrament of Reconciliation. We have it available on Saturday afternoons at four, and I'm available by appointment anytime, and know that I will gladly extend the hours for it if there's a desire. So consider it and know that I am happy to assist you in any way that I can. One more thing too, we have plenty of nearby parishes that offer the Sacrament of Reconciliation and any of them will be able to help you and happy to help you as well. Holy Redeemer, St. Andrews, the Madeline, and St. Rose, I dare say Ascension, all have good and sensitive priests who will be happy to minister that sacrament to you. If for some reason you don't want to come to me, those will be good options for you as well. Personally, I try to go monthly, 
I get physically agitated when I don't. But all of us should try and go at least once, twice, three or four times a year. Once you get in the habit, you'll begin to see changes in your life and you won't be disappointed. So your homework this week is simply to consider going to the sacrament of reconciliation.